Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. My name is Mobby, and today we're going to play Divinity Original Sin 2. I have played the first one uh, when it first came out. I didn't really get into it that much, but I really enjoyed the game. So here we are with the second one, and I'm going to try to stick with it. You know, these are one of those types of games where it's very heavily you know time investment and um, you know it's just a lot of lore but it's a very deep deep game so if you don't know what this kind of game is think about it as like a diablo type of thing but like a single player or up to i think four players at once you can play online multiplayer i'm going to play a totally single player um, i'm going to be playing on steam i'm going to be using an xbox one controller and i'm going to create a custom character um, the game recommends that you use one of the original characters like this. See underneath background, it has the origin. So you can choose one of these and you can just play the game. But I think I'm just going to go straight out with a uh, with a custom character. So let's look at through all the stuff. Um, so just so you guys know, I am playing on classic mode as well. And I'm a super noob at this. So I will be reading the tutorials and getting all that good stuff. So please sit back and enjoy this amazing, awesome journey with me. I'll try to upload these every single day. So here we go. We got the dwarves and you can change um you can change male female. You can see there's a metamorph ranger rogue, lots of different types. So let's just begin with um making our our freaking race here. So we have the elf, there's a male and a female type of elves here. We got humans. I'm gonna go ahead and just put this on uh, the fighter. Humans. We have lizards, male and female, undead dwarfs. I have no idea what the undead is supposed to do. I think there are um, factions, like um, different characters in the game will react to you. If, you know, depending on what kind of character you are. Oh, here's a beast? Beast? This is only like, oh, it's origin. It's origin. So we got undead. So there's, okay, so lizard, human, elf, dwarf. And they're all un, and they could be undead. I don't know what the undead stuff does, but I think we'll just go with the straight out human. I know, really basic. Oh, wow, Bobby, you're so freaking fancy with the human. Uh, we'll pick a um, we'll pick a grill because I love me my grills. Then let's look at the classes. We got fighter, inquisitor, hmm, knight. Ooh, knight looks really cool. Um, we got a metamorph, ranger, rogue. Ooh, rogue seems cool. Shadow blade. Wow, wayfarer, another a crossbow. Witch, wizard, battle mage, holy crap, that looks legit. Cleric, conjurer, enchanter. Damn, there's a lot of classes. This is a build preset. I'm not sure if you can like really change it up, but I really like the look of the battle mage, guys. I like the battle mage a lot. I'm going to go for the battle mage, and we will rename her Mabi, just because. All right, we're going to go with... Um, Mobby the Battle Mage Grill. Okay, we can go. We can change the appearance. So let's check out the uh, the faces. How many do we got here? Let's just go through them all. There seems to be about ten of them. So let's go. Uh, uh ooh, six looks pretty uh, majestic. Hairstyles. Oh, we got the hairstyles. Huh? So up to ten. Here we go. Let's see. Hmm. Five, four. That looks crazy. This person looks crazy. Three, two. I really like two. I think two is really good. Uh, yeah, I think we'll do, we'll do two, two, and we can change the color. Um, is there any, oh, skin color. I was going to do hair color. Can I do hair color? Well, let's just go with, um, skin color first. Ah, shale. Pretty good. Okay. Hair color. Orange. Orange is my favorite. So we'll go with two door, two tour. Damn. Voice. Greet the reaper for me. Try again. Let's listen to this. I'm ready. Meet your mate. Oh, nice try. You're not trying I'll yield to none. Okay, we'll do the uh, the scholar voice. And then we got preset attributes. And we can edit it. Um I'm not sure what to do here. Okay, we'll edit the attributes. Okay, so I so I'm really, really sorry if I mess these up, but I have no idea what I'm doing here. So let's put these all to zero. Let's learn. Okay, melee damage. Now I'm not sure what exactly this character does, you know. Okay, I'm gonna look at her abilities. Look at that, Wayfair, Arrow Thurge, Geomancy, Necromancy. Oh my god, we can get like really, really crazy up in this thing. Okay. Okay, so here are our skills and we can probably go with, with this then I suppose. Okay, so Shocking Touch. Well, it sets the shock status, um, 7 to 8 air damage. 
Air damage. Resisted by magic armor. Requires Aero Thurge 1. Aero Thurge 1. Aero Thurge 1. Aero Thurge. Requires war Warfare. Melee. Should we just go straight for like... Like... Hmm, like toggle skill? Okay. I mean, like this is this is what a battle mage does. You're you're supposed to be able to, you know, fight and use magic. So I think that's good. What does this skill do? Uh, controls increases movement speed while they stay close to you. Discharge. So I'm pretty sure you learn a lot more than these, but these are going to be your 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 um your starting ones. Okay. So we want to do a mix between magic and a mix between fighting, right? Let's do what's crippling blow. Cripple the target with a sweeping blow. Cripple. So this is pretty good. Requires Warfare 1. So let's go here. Okay, okay, okay. So our character. What are we going to learn here? Okay. So we have defense. Okay, so it put it put one in Warfare. And it put one in Arrow Thurge, which is exactly what we're doing. So there you go. It already put it for us. Arrow Thurge and Warfare. So now we can learn all of this, which is great. And we now know Crippling Blow, and we're going to learn Shocking Touch. And we get one more. They give me one more to learn. Um, discharge. Hmm. Um, favorable Wind, Blinding Radiance. Enemies around you receive damage. You receive status that turns enemies in five blind. Set Blinding Radiance. That's pretty good. I like that. It's not bad. Battering Ram, Battle Stomp. Crippling blow, bouncing shield, like uh, like Captain America's status, huh? Uh, shocked. All right, we'll try blinding radiance. Okay, so we have three skills starting with this character, and now we can choose these. Okay, so strength is melee damage, one point melee damage. So I'm gonna assume these skills, like this, is absolutely melee, right? It says um, receives a bonus from strength, receives a bonus from intelligence. Receives a bonus from, okay, intelligence. This is regular intelligence based on the armor of your shield. Uh, strength, strength. So we want to go strength, at least one is strength and one in intelligence. And then we get one other skill. This is range damage, we don't want that. Um, constitution is my vitality. Memory determines the number of skills a character can learn at once. Allows for detection of the extraordinary. See, I don't know like if I want to be doing this, so instead we'll just do uh, two, two intelligence. Like we want a little bit of, want a little bit of melee, but mostly magic. So that's it. And then you can make your own custom characters and stuff like that. We got defense, weapons, you know, warfare and all that good stuff. Okay, so this is our character. Let's do this. I can back up. Now we okay okay looks good to me. Now we know our talents. What the hell are these things? Okay, so we know th we are thrifty, and we are, oh my god, look at all the different talents that you can do. Oh my god, there's so many guys. What's all this? How come I can't do these? Requires level two. Requires huntsman. Oh, so these ones are available to me right now. Okay, so it's giving us this one at the beginning. It gives you a two bonus initiative and a five extra critical chance. That's actually not bad. I like that a lot. Thrifty, one to bartering. So we're going to be really good with buying and selling. And then... um. What was that comeback kid? And we can do one more of any one of these. Once per combat, if an enemy lands a fatal blow, you'll bounce back to life with 20 health. If you die in combat, it'll be available again. Dang, that's really cool. Um, uh, no, no, no. Let's pick another one. Let's see. Escapist. Flea of combat. Executioner. Requires warfare. Incompatible with the pawn. So the pawn is going to be another one of these probably. Ex two extra actions after dealing a blow. Far out. Far out, man. Increases the range of skills and scrolls by two. Does not affect melee and touch range skills. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, doubles the effect of food and poisons. Glass cannon. Sneaking. While you are maximum vitality. Leech. While you are standing on leech, they heal you. <laughs> um, what's this? Minomic. Three extra points in your memory attribute. That's pretty nice. That's not bad. Opportunist gives you ability to perform number of attacks. Opportunity. Um, ten percent dodging while dual wielding. You know, we'll we'll probably dual wield with our character. I'm not gonna lie, that might be nice to do. Pet pal allows you to talk to animals. <laughs> talk to animals. Hmm. A uh, picture of health gives you three vitality percent for every point in warfare. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're not going like super tanky, right? Slingshot, grenade throws, stench, 
There's so many of these guys. Unstable makes you explode when you die. All oh, fun. <laughs> I guess we're gonna I, like probably throughout the game we, we might um, get characters to play with, so we'll see. Uh, I'm just trying to pick one of these. Um, I don't want that. Okay, we're gonna go with the um, the parry mask. We're gonna be um, dual wielding, and we have a 10% chance to dodge. So here we go. Uh, that's it. What's next? Tags. Available tags. We are human, and we are female. We are also a soldier and a scholar so we are a, a straight battle mage so these tags make the people around you you know like oh you're a soldier hey you know i trust you do this stuff and whatever what is instrument here um select your origin instrument it will take the lead in the music it will highlight your your moments oh that's interesting um okay get that thing out of the way please okay so Bonsuri? We'll pick a cello for our character, I suppose. Alright, I'm ready! Are you done with character creation? I think that's it. So this is our character, Mobby. The battle mage. Um, not too tanky, but really, really good. We can go up front and attack and blind people. And let us begin. Oh, look at that. We have persuasion plus one. So we're also pretty good with bartering and whatnot. I like this. Alright, let's begin the game. <laughs> Ten minutes in, but uh, that's what happens, man. So and please enjoy the story with me. I will be reading a lot of the lore, and I hope you guys will enjoy what we come across. Uh, hopefully, I don't, you know, go super crazy bad in the game, but uh, I'll try my best. I'll try my best. So. It all happened like I knew it would. I don't have subtitles on, for some reason. A single drop of sauce. Flies to honey. The monsters swarmed. The rebel panicked. The carnage began. And the magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. Just as I planned. I was shackled and collared. And sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill Godwoken. But instead, I became part of their story. Divinity Original Thin 2. Yeah, I don't know what's happening in the story right now. <laughs> um, bear with me. I will try to learn. So I'm not sure how it connects to the first one other than the name. Um, okay, let's read that. What is that? Ooze surfaces, not only poison. Okay. Sneak up. Okay. It's going too fast for me to read that out loud, so I guess I'll just do it in my mind. I do it in my mind. Oh my god, what is happening? Is that me there? I am on that table. Am I one of these prisoners? Holy crap, dude. I am one of the prisoners. What is happening here? So it, it, it was the dream long. after all. Oh my god. Alright, four new journal updates. Save and quick save. Look at my character. Holy crap. Welcome. Move a character with this. Okay, thank you very much. So I will do all the tutorials. Press A when facing to talk. Um, I need to check and make sure that subtitles are on. Audio. Subtitles. Let's see here. Is it here or is it in video? Is it in gameplay? Might be in gameplay. Game. Difficulty. All that is off. Show subtitles. Hell yeah. Why is that off by like default? Alright, so welcome boys. Rotate the camera. Zoom in and out. Ooh, look at me. Operating table. I can lie in it. I don't even remember them strapping me down. What does this do? A gritting skull a use. Fellow, are you? Action use. This is a, a coloring rack. Me Med medical cabinet. You can look in it. So I have no idea what the heck we're doing here. Uh, but the game should let me know what the heck's happening. So let's just go on with the story and see what happens. Here is a some sort of book here. Small tomb. Books. Okay. Hold right trigger to open the panel selection radio. And then point it. Put it over the cursor and press it. Okay. So this is it. We got character. Oh, journal. Here we are. Journal. The journey so... St my journey so far. Okay. So we have... I'm going to try to figure out what the hell's happening. Okay. 
So the Magisters, though he is a source, a sorcerer, and he wears a source collar. Bishop Alexander continues to lead the Divine Order. Okay, I don't know who the hell that is. Okay, so chapter one. Here we are. This is chapter one, guys. Okay. So Lucian the Divine, the champion of the Seven Gods, is dead. Sacrificed himself, leaving his son Alexander inca okay, incapable of wielding the Divine Powers. La -la, la 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 Alexander has decreed that all sorcerers must be resettled in isolated colonies where they cannot pose a threat to the rest of Revelion. One such colony is the ancient island stronghold of Fort Joy. It is where the place that I, a captive sorcerer, is being sent to. So I am a sorcerer and I got captured because of the events in the first game that they don't trust sorcerers. I think that's what it is. That's what I'm getting so far. And now this is the Merryweather. Okay. So we are now in the Merryweather. And I am bound by a magical collar that cannot be removed. We are sorcerers being transported to Fort Joy, an ancient fortress on a remote island where magisters of the Divine Order have established internment camps. So we're prisoners. We're going to figure out how to get out of here, I guess. All right. Cool. Cool. I like that a lot. All right. Let's go into quick save. And let's put the. What's this? Um, is an empty bottle potion pick up. I don't know what to do, so I'm just picking all this crap up. I really don't know. Like, I could pick up what? Like, can I sell this stuff? Is there a weight limit? I'm gonna feel like I feel like there's definitely a weight limit. Uh, but we'll see. Use candle holder, I guess. All objects in the radial have been put into a temporary list. Okay. What's this? A strange jar. How do I like uh, choose everything? Here we go. Strange jar. Uh, another strange jar, row of books, nothing in here. So it's in my inventory. Um, I don't know what to do with it. Oh, look, I do have weight. I think it's up there. So this is all stuff. I have a healing potion, resurrection scroll. Uh, resurrect a dead ally within 30 me 13 meters. Fireball scroll, it's a one-time use, I suppose. As a backpack, seems bottomless. So it's a backpack for extra items, huh? Can I sort it out? Um, by type. There you go, that's good. We also got a small tomb that we, I think we picked that up right now. Used to read, <laughs> used to read. Uh, okay, it's just a, uh, it's just a lot of stuff. Uh, hopefully you can probably sell it. Empty bottle potion. You can concoction, we can brew stuff, laboratory stuff. Um, dust these items here and just more jars that we can't use. All right, let's see what's going on. So I am down here. Hello, Magister Shiwan. There, not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. Ah, uh, so we have the, uh, you'll see we have different, um, different ones here, different types of choices, and it, it will probably affect the outcome. We have, like, the, the basic ones, we have the soldier and scholar ones. Okay, um, um, okay, so I am both a scholar and a soldier, and I'm gonna go with the hot headedness, and but you know, with my person. Okay, so here we go. Soldier, give the magistrate a quick salute and report for the duty on the good ship. The good ship Merryweather. But you can stand at ease there, private. You do realize you're not in any army here, don't you? So I am the soldier, I am a good guy, I'm going for lawfully good. And uh, that's how we're going to roleplay this game, right, guys? Lawfully good. Pressed to her lips. She pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. Ooh, we have a narrator. Look. My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely, eventually. In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. A new life awaits. And if you're a particularly good girl, perhaps a cure as well. A cure? An end to source. For good. Ugh. You pull at the thing around your neck futilely, demand to know why she collared you. Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. She might be playing a trick. Don't do it. Oh, do go on. Hm. I won't hold it against you. Promise. No, I'm not going to do it. My, aren't we a meek little lamb? Perhaps I needn't have collared you at all. Though it does look darling on you. <laughs> so let's just leave it on, shall we? My magic is suppressed. To your question, what the collar does is this. 
It makes you unable to cast source. Source is magic, I guess. For your own peace of mind, of course. Yours and the whole world's. Fine, we'll take my leave. All right, so she wants us to go walk to this guy and uh, log in our our people. There's, there's been a murder here. A been a murder. Finn, I opened up a dead body. That's not yours. Uh, oh, look, he had attitude towards me, negative five. No lesions, no oh time. no. Okay, so in this game, it looks like there's a lot. Like, like depending on uh, you know how you how you act, people will have. Um, a different opinion of you. So here we go. We're gonna go straight for you know, like I said, lawfully good guys. I'll try my hardest to be a good soldier. Who knows magic? I'm a uh, you know, just well, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, what's up? Ugly sight, isn't it? Burns me up. This happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky. No void walk and follow the source that did this. Ask why she's letting you so close to the crime scene. For all she knows, I could be the killer. She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Ask if she's investigating her fellow managers as well. One of them could have easily done this. Finn was killed by Sauce. If a Magister could do that, they wouldn't be a Magister. It looks more like a passenger managed to slip their collar. And the rest, well, you see the evidence in front of you. D, so one of the people with the collar was dead. Listen, I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. Ooh. How about that? Um, you know what? Uh, murder is wrong, so I'm role-playing lawfully good, and I will say nod and say I'll let her know if I hear anything interesting, because I want to know who killed this person. Thanks. I just want to catch whoever did this before they hurt anyone else. I will make sure we find out. So, her attitude is a little bit bad, because I press steal, I think? Yeah, look, look at that. I pressed open, but then it's red, so that means that probably means steal. So let's not do that again. There's a poetry book. I hope you can sell these. I could pick up a table. I'm trying to pick up a table. Take that. All right, we're lawfully good. <laughs> let's not mess up. Can I run? Oh, look at that. I can move the camera around. Ooh. Okay, what do I do now? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Let's just keep moving forward. Um, let's see. Is that a door? I oh, shall open it up. Was that the person I needed like to talk to? All right. Hello. Hello, everybody. Sandy, look at these kids. What the hell? Why are they? What are they doing here? Hello, Los. Are these your kids? What's going on? Oh, there you are. <clears throat> Wife. Wife? Would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all brat like babes that I am by no accounts this Losa woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. <laughs> Play along. Tell the children they must be mistaken. How very correct you are, spouse of mine. Madam Josephine Gribbles de Peeve refuses to be confused <laughs> with anyone else. Who is she? She must be famous or something, and the kids are like, hey, it's you. What? What's so funny? Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and get, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She looks like a mage as well. She turns to you dark-eyed and dirty head and smiles flatly gotta keep ourselves entertained haven't we <laughs> say say that that's true enough shake her hand low so you presume you presume right all right tell us she ought to look around with you we should watch each other's backs thanks but i already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang we play ball every day after lunch yeah i guess that's sarcasm you take care though all right ask if she knows anything about the murder nope Trying not to find anything out either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. Suddenly, uh, I her guess. eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Grayish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. Interesting. What if I get to trust her? Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the... Let's see if I can do a little bit more sound here, guys. I would like voices to be a little bit more definitely guys definitely this is voice dialogue though and I think this is exactly what's high so I'm not sure what voice master means 
Um, but hopefully this is loud enough for you guys. Um, okay. Hopefully it is. Oh, look at that. There's a stool I can sit on. Alright, let's see what's going on here. There's a uh, guy here. This guy looks a little... Um, definitely looks a little suspicious. So this is Fane. The elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks up, his big round eyes scanning your body, absorbing every detail. He reaches out and takes your hand, turning it this way and that, examining it from every angle. Finally, he pinches your skin, gently tugging at it. Fascinating. He sits back and returns to his book, flicking quickly from page to page, completely oblivious to your presence. Ask whether the book he's reading is any good. He seems engrossed in it. It is simultaneously too detailed and insufficient. I know the beginning of this tale and the end, but I am rather missing the middle. Tell me, what do you know of your... Our world's history? Our world's history. Alright, so human, soldier, or scholar. Talk about the recent threat and of how the Magisters had been fighting the Voidwalken over all rebellion. So the Magisters um, are these people taking us captive and the, the Void Woken seem to be the bad guy, I think. So, yeah. Oh, please. I have no interest in that. Your books are too full of it already. All right, he's a freaking stuck up Del Farino. I want to know about the Celestial. I want to know about your gods. This text tells me that they created all creatures, but nothing of what came before. Where did these gods come from? Who are their people? Where are the others of their kind? Ask him why he's so curious. The elf's face freezes for just a second before he waves his hand dismissively. Oh, it's just one of my idle curiosities. We mortals do like to consider these things, do we not? Now please, run along. I have a world to decipher. I'm going to insist. Why are you so curious about the gods? No amount of pestering will get the elf to take his eyes off his book or respond to your questions. Eh, what a jerk face. Alright, um, we gotta find out more about this person here. Alright, I'm gonna sit with these guys. What's up, man? How's it going, huh? They don't care about us. We're like cattle to them. Cattle? Hey, wait, do you know anything about what's happening? Gil. You're one of them. A divine order loyal. They killed a sorcerer, you know. They'll hide the evidence well enough, but make no mistake. Huh. So he's suspicious about people on the boat. Um, who is this? Magister Victor. I'm What's up, man? Watching for clues, sorcerer. Go take your sub story somewhere else. <laughs> what an asshole, yo. All right, who's this guy in the corner? This is a uh, Ifan Benmizd. A scruffy man lounges against the wall with scarred arms folded. A sly smile playing on his face. He stares across at the magister guarding him. Noticing you, he straightens and beckons for you to come closer. Watch your back, new fish. There's a murderer on board, and I'd bet three months' pay it's this tramp you found. Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning, the man named Ifan beckons again. For some reason, your instinct cries out to salute, but you hold yourself back. There's another soldier. There's two soldier ones. Um, you can, you can, um, so I can salute him, but no, like, we're a soldier, but we're not stupid, so we're gonna hold ourselves back from, uh, from saluting him, but say what's up. He leans in, and adjusts your collar with a sharp tug, balancing its weight so it no longer presses unpleasantly on your neck. He winks. He, <laughs> he balances it. Inches less that way, right? Hocking a phlegmy gobbit in your general direction, the sullen magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ifa. And now, you. All right. Why is that guy suspecting you of murder, Ifan? We used to know each other, more's the pity. I was his commander many, many, many moons ago. Isn't that right, Vic? Standing far back from Ifan, the tight-faced magister draws one finger across his throat in an elaborate fashion, but says nothing. Finger to the throat means death. Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Same as he was at 14 years old. Only difference is, somebody gave him a bigger sword, and now he's Johnny Big Pants. So, did you actually do the murder? No. The dead man, Finn, is it? I had no business with him. And I wouldn't put a man down without good reason. He glances over at Magister Victor, who's staring back at him with pointed intensity. Damn shame sheer annoyance isn't reason enough. 
All right, well, Ifan, how did you end up being a prisoner slash subordinate? Long story. Maybe I'll tell you about it in the joy. Away from interested parties. Well, if anything, do you know anything about Fort Joy? The Joy? I've heard a lot. Nothing good. No surprise there, since Bishop Alexander runs the show. Wonder if we'll get to meet the Ringmaster himself. Hmm. I'd like to meet Alexander. Show him exactly what I think of his bloody divine order. Easy now. I might think the same. But Vic here will blow a blood vessel if he hears you talking like that. What are you conspiring about over there? You? What's your name? Oh, don't mind him. Vic's just got a bee in his bonnet. And that bee is me. Name? My name is Mavi. Magister Victor looks at you suspiciously, then scrawls something illegible down in a tiny notebook. He scowls at you as he stows the notebook back in his voluminous robes. Away with you, at once. Ifan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips as he leans back against the wall. Hmm. So that guy, like, wrote my name down or something? Oh, look, there's a crate here. It's green, so it doesn't mean stealing. Alright, let's keep looking. I think they want me to maybe talk to most of these main characters. Uh, so we saw that elf over there. We saw that human lady who's some kind of sorcerer. This guy over there. And maybe these guys. So the Red Prince and Namaya. Alright, Nam Namiya, what's up? I spent my life singing for my slaves to bring me my supper. Finer fare than boiled roots and rotten tubers, too. Meanwhile, the Magisters feast on honeyed meat behind this very wall. <gasps> the indignity. Alright, Prince. How you doing? Well, well. What have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. Let's size you up, shall we? See if you'll do. The lizard looks you up and down, like a farmer would a fetching horse. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin, with the intent of inspecting your teeth. What are you doing? I'm inspecting your teeth, in case that wasn't spectacularly obvious. Hmm. There's some discoloration, but I've seen worse. After all, one can't expect to find prime merchandise on a squalid little ship like this. <laughs> this guy's weird. Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Can you cook? <laughs> Dude, I can barely cook. I can barely tell a turkey from a turnip. Oh, goodness, no. And don't even mention the demon's testes that are turnips. <laughs> On to the second question. Can you knit, weave, in short... Uh, well, I have known to be able to make my own socks. Oh, but to feel the caress of satin on my scarlet skin once more. A most satisfactory answer indeed. On then to my final query. Have you the ability to administer the upkeep of one's personal appearance? The delicate art of cosmetics is what I'm after. Uh, yeah. It's called showering, bro. The very basics, then. I suppose that's a start. So, three questions asked, three questions answered. Let's evaluate, shall we? As per your own testimony, you can tailor and groom, but you have the taste buds of a dung beetle. Still, beggars can't be choosers. So without further ado, I offer you my sincerest congratulations. As of now, you are my slave. Just stare at him blankly. Uh, okay. My slave, of course. Oh, but I see. Yes, I, I suppose it must take uh, some time for the full extent of this honor to sink in. Anyway, you may leave me for a moment. We'll go over your duties once we reach Fort Joy. Now shoot. Oh my god, this guy's literally called the prince. Alright, let's talk to Gil now. I didn't do nothing, okay? It was one of them. One of your people. Human. Human? That must be a dwarf then. Did I talk to this guy yet? Beast? A broad dwarf sits totally up. Oh, another dwarf. Eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, ghetto. You hear that? What am I hearing? The ship, of course. Wave is request. Okay. Do you know anything about the murder that happened? His eyes snap open. He looks at you and frowns. 
Murder? Ah, that's what they were going on and on about. I wouldn't know anything about it. I kill a man. He knows who done it. His daddy knows who done it. And the mayor knows who done it too. His eyes flutter shut, and he assumes his position of repose once more. Whether they catch me is another matter. But I ain't one to hide my accomplishments. <sighs> okay, I'll listen to the ship. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates. The groaning of wood from floor to ceiling. The boom, crash and crackle of waves around you. Complaints from the sea itself. And? Uh... I can barely hear there's too many people talking. Eh. A common sort of sound, isn't it? Where there's talk, there's health. That's all you hear, though. Listen close. What am I supposed to be listening for? You've got ears on your head, haven't you? You need me to show you how to use them. <sighs> Let me close my eyes. There now, just like that. Aha! His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back. The other catches you before you lose your footing. There. You heard it, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Ah, this is good news, ghetto. <laughs> good news. What's it supposed to be? It's the wheel. The wheel. Don't you see, you beautiful idiot? Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we are heading east. Burn my beard. That means if we've been traveling for... Yes. Only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. Holy crap, you must be a really awesome sailor. Captain, actually. And that figure tells me we're getting close to the Joy. Close to what lies beyond it, too. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, ghetto. Listen, man. I don't like this ship more than you do. I'm a soldier and all, but if you're trying to escape, I'm in, man. He continues stroking his beard, a beatific smile on his lips, and doesn't acknowledge you anymore. <laughs> it was one of them. I think he wants out. Is there anyone else I need to talk to here? Sybil. An elf sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. Uh, what are you? What are you up to? Rolling dice, deciding fates. Uh, like what? Don't worry, honey. It isn't yours. She looks you up and down with the merest tint of a coy smile on her lips. Never say never, though. Okay, I'll just back she up. She smiles contemptuously. Just a kitten in a corner, aren't we? Oh god. Ooh, it's a crate here with nothing in it. Alright. Um I don't know if I need to talk to anyone else here. Let's see here. So I'm pretty sure they want me to talk to all these people because Okay, stairs. I'll need to find another way. Okay. Mm, what's up? A young magister stands pale and silent. Her knuckles whiten around her weapon as you pass. Okay. Behind the magister. A bloodied mass lies in a heap. I should have talked Gore to this guy first. Limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. What happened? There's been a murder. A sorcerer was killed by one of your own. Lucky you were busy getting your collar fitted at the time, or you'd be a suspect like the rest of them. Waters is investigating. She'll figure out who did it. Always does. All right, what can I do to help? Aren't you enterprising? I'll let Waters tell you now herself. Go ahead. She with the body. All right, so pretty much we're still in the middle of trying to figure out any information. So far, we've learned a little bit about people in here, but we don't know anything about escaping. Um, let's talk to this guy. Um, it's Mobby. Well, you aren't here on my list, Scrammy. We're trying to catch a killer here. Okay. Who else do I talk to? Uh, I guess this magister. Hello. Here's the register, ma'am. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. You faring okay so far? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Glad to hear it. You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. All right, Williams. What the hell are they doing? Shoot to kill. 
What's going on here? Standing at the center of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous-looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. So you admit it then? You murdered that poor fella? Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. Is that the lady that we saw at the beginning cutscene? She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. There are others whose lives must end. Good God, the woman's mad. You there, sorcerer. Go and fetch Magister Siwan. We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. All right, she murdered her. I believe you. I'll go get the guy. By all means, do as the officer says. But you had better hurry, because... She reaches for her coat <gasps> and simply removes it. I'm just about to create a scene. Subdue her, man, quickly! If she casts source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely. Fight? Wait, I don't know how to do this. Game? Teach me how to play? She used Source Blast. And we're all knocked down. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's trouble on a ship, what? mateys. What's happened? That's trouble on a ship. Alright, guys. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to end this one here. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like. It helps so much. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. I upload a lot of daily videos. Um, this has been the first episode of Divi uh, Divinity Original Sin 2. And I know we didn't do much this episode. We made our character. We learned about a lot of the other characters on the ship. And barely doing any of that stuff. But this is one of those games where I really want to take my time. You know, learn about the story, the lore. You know, if we skim through everything, we wouldn't know a lot of the key terms like void walkers and stuff like that. So I hope you guys are the types of players that enjoy story because I am definitely going to be taking my time. So please let me know in the comments what you think about the game and how you think I'm going to enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. And I'll see you guys next time.